Hey there, it's me, Crystal. So I had to scrap my original intro for nonsense reasons, but today I want to talk about my favorite darker themed graphic novels. And so I have a comic book, I have some manga, I have some general graphic novels, and I have some graphic novels that are adapted from another book. And so let's get started. <laughs> so the first one I wanted to talk about is Batman the Killing Joke from DC Comics. This is by Alec Moore, who is the same guy who wrote Watchmen. And this is kind of like a Joker origin story. The guy never gets a name, but it has two plot lines. It has one in the past and one in the present. And I thought this book did a really good job of differentiating between the two, using the brighter colors for the present day storyline. And then like, cool like warmer sepia tones for the past storyline and so in the past storyline you have this guy who's a struggling comic he makes some bad decisions and he becomes a joker and the present day storyline the joker has kidnapped jim gordon and is torturing him because he's trying to prove that all it takes is one bad day to turn a reasonably sane guy into a villain and the artwork in this is absolutely stunning. And if you've been wanting to read the comic book and you kind of just want to dip your toes in the water, this is like a really good place to start. It's highly rated. Um, a lot of people really like the story. I really like the story. It's short and it is really dark because um, it's the Joker and he's crazy. <laughs> but it's also really, really good. So the next one I wanted to talk about is the manga classics edition of Dracula by Bram Stoker. And if you're not familiar with manga classics, they take classic literature and adapt them into a manga. And so it takes text and everything directly from the books. And so nothing is added. It's just that story. And um, Dracula is one of my favorite pieces of classic literature. It's very atmospheric, it's very gothic, it's very dark, and it's told through like letters and journal entries and telegrams and phonographs. And it's basically centered around this group of people who's trying to stop um, this vampire who moves from Transylvania to London and now he's terrorizing London. Um, anyway, um, the artwork style in this is so so lovely and I thought this was a really good adaptation because the pacing in this was fantastic and it still has that same like you know atmospheric dark gothic tone that the original book has but it's a little bit easier to digest because you know it's a manga and a lot of that heavy description is replaced by pictures so I thought this was really good and if you haven't read Dracula I highly recommend you read Dracula or you read the manga version because they're both really good so the next manga I want to talk about is not one that I've read yet but I wanted to mention it because it's really dark and it's Death Note by Sagumi Oba I think and I haven't watched the Netflix adaptation of it yet, but the basic premise to Death Note is this guy finds this notebook and the notebook turns out that it belongs to death. And so anytime he writes a person's name in it, like they die. And it sounds like it's really fun. So I wanted to mention it. So the last manga I wanted to talk about is actually my favorite manga and that is Parasite by Hitoshi Iwaki. And you guys, this gets so dark, like super, super, super dark. Like at one point while I was reading this, I like got to a point where like I couldn't sleep until I finished the whole story because I was so disturbed. So there are eight volumes. This is sci-fi horror and it has a lot of comedic elements. And so this is about this guy named Shin. And so there are aliens called parasites that are under the radar infiltrating earth and basically what they do is they crawl into your ear while you're sleeping and take over your brain so shen is napping over his homework and he has headphones on and so the parasite can't get in through his ear so it tries to go up through his nose so shen wakes up because something's wiggling up his nose and he freaks out pulls it out flings it across the room and so the parasite gathers itself flies at his face shen throws up his hand it goes in through his left hand and crawls up his arm and so shen cuts off the circulation to his arm and the parasite in order to survive has no choice but to assimilate in his left arm and so now this teenager has a parasite um as his left arm and i wanted to show you some of the artwork in here because some of the images with this parasite they're so cute and so like when they're alone like he pops up with his little eyeballs sometimes he has two eyeballs and he starts talking to shin and you know shin has to teach him not to pop up when he's in public and when he's around other people and so together shin and lefty start 
fighting off some of the parasites that are in this village because parasites are eating people. <laughs> And, you know, as the story goes on, it gets darker and darker and darker. And it is so, so, so good. It's like, it's so good, but it gets really, really dark. The next one I want to talk about is the only other graphic novel on this list that I haven't read. And that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. And I watched the first season of the Hulu show and it's like really dark and really disturbing. And so I haven't been able to talk myself into watching any more yet. So I was like, I'll just read the book to, so I can find out what happens. And then when I looked it up, I saw they had this graphic novel and I was like, I'll just read the graphic novel. So this is what the artwork looks like. And if you're not familiar with The Handmaid's Tale, it's a dystopian world where there are really really high infertility rates so the u.s has become this kind of religious cultish thing and they basically kidnap the fertile women and send them to the homes of these like noblemen um to get impregnated and then the baby would be raised by the nobleman and his wife because they want the kids to have good family um yeah it's really dark really disturbing and i'm really looking forward to reading this so the next graphic novel i wanted to mention is another adaptation and that is a game of thrones by george R. R. martin and this um as far as i can tell seems like a very faithful adaptation to the books i haven't read the book yet i do have it um, but this is just volume one of four and so it's very dense. There is a lot going on. There are a lot of people. Everyone is terrible. <laughs> so I wanted to show you some of the artwork. The artwork is really, really good. And let me see if I can find this White Walker at the beginning. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. And it's like... That is gorgeous. That is so gorgeous. Like, I know why they changed it in the show um, to be, like, more creepy or whatever. But anyway, um, in the book, they're described as being, like, tall and kind of beautiful and kind of ethereal. And, yeah, so if you are kind of like me and maybe you're intimidated by A Game of Thrones and you want, like, an easy, digestible version, I've read two of the four volumes so far and they are really good. Um, I can see why this story is so popular. So the next graphic novel I want to talk about is Blackbird by Sam Humphreys and illustrated by Jim Bartell. And this was strictly a cover buy for me. Like I saw this cover and I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. So I had no idea what I was getting into. So I would say this is like urban fantasy, paranormal, supernatural. And it's about this girl and you know, she's kind of a bum. <laughs> So she was in a car accident a long time ago and as a result of that she now has some abilities that are starting to manifest now that she's a little older and it's really good it's really fun it's vibrant there's a talking cat but it's not it's not ridiculous you know and there are monsters and the artwork in this is just amazing so here is some of the artwork and i will also show you I'm going to show you this. I love this. So, yeah. So, this is fun. It's not as dark as some of the other things on this list. But, yes, it has, a, like, a dark, fun, um, supernatural atmosphere. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, the last one I want to talk about is literally my most favorite graphic novel that I've ever read in my life. And that is Snow Glass Apples by Neil Gaiman. Um, illustrated by Colleen Duran and this is so so dark like I finished this book and I was immediately like I want a hundred more fairy tale retellings just like this so it's Snow White and Snow White is a creepy little monster and it is awesome it's dark and um just in case you are more conservative um this is a little naked and also game of thrones is also a little naked um in places but anyway but yes yeah, so very early on here's snow white you can see how incredibly creepy this little girl is so her mom died um when she was younger i don't know i don't know if she died giving birth i don't remember but her mom died and so her dad finds this beautiful gorgeous woman to be her stepmother and the stepmother is immediately like off put by this creepy little girl <laughs> 
and it is so good it's so dark it's so dark and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and it's atmospheric and it's just like my favorite my favorite thing in the whole world and i really like the way this was approached it had that very um old school like dark fairy tale feel and i really like that the narrator was the stepmother and it was really well done if you like fairy tales and you like graphic novels oh my gosh <laughs> So that is all for this video. Let me know if you read any of these books and what you thought about them. Do you read graphic novels? Do you love them? I love them. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.